Go ahead. All right. Howdy, people. This is G Kubernetes and GlusterFS finally playing nice together, lightning version. I'm Jose. This is Ashik. Let's see what we can do in five minutes. Uh, hi. So, GlusterFS. So, mostly everyone knows GlusterFS, I think. So, GlusterFS is a distributed storage, software defined storage file system. So, it, uh, it aggregates storage from different nodes and gives out as a single volume to the customer or the user. So how its minimum level is bricks uh, and from a device an LV is created and that small part of LV is a brick. We take LVs from each node, I mean bricks from each node in terms of GlusterFS and create a volume out of it and mount it anywhere. We have protocol supporting Fuse and NFS and Samba. So that's what GlusterFS is in shorter version. And Hecate. Hecate is a RESTful interface which can manage GlusterFS volumes or create GlusterFS volumes for you. You don't have to go behind the screen and create the LVs, VGs, and manage your disks. So Hecate will take care of it. And Jose is going to continue on the cool part. Cool part, I see. All right. So uh, these days, ClusterFS and Hecate are fully hyper-converged with Kubernetes. Uh, that just means that they're running as containers in a Kubernetes cluster, serving storage for other, for other Kubernetes applications. Um, obviously, with hyper-convergence, this means that you guys can save money in your data centers by not having to buy separate storage appliances, just buy a couple SSDs or something. Um, these, uh, the applications, have applications in Kubernetes have native access to storage from Kubernetes, which means that it's you know a little less network latency and is less prone to and it's, it's less prone to outages from the network because if your if if your apps can't access your storage, that means your uh, that means your Kubernetes cluster is down and you have other problems. Um, and the GlusterFS node can don't need to run on every node all the time. They only need to run on the nodes that actually have storage on them. So you can actually have nodes that aren't there aren't that are not completely alike. And the Gluster, the GlusterFS uh, daemon set will take care of making sure they're running in the right place. And we kept the ability to easily scale out um, that is given that is that is brought with GlusterFS. Um, here's a little picture of how things are supposed to look. Um, you'll see that Hecate is running as a single pod on one of the nodes. It doesn't matter which node it's on. Um, and the three nodes that have storage attached to them have GlusterFS pods running in them that are all logically linked together into one GlusterFS cluster. Um, and as, I'm, as you can see there, they don't have to have the same topology of disks on every node. We just need to know what the topology is so that we can serve it to the Kubernetes applications. Um, and and we also, we, we also allow for dynamic provisioning, if you're familiar with that in Kubernetes. Uh, the administrator on the right there uh, provides a storage class which defines um, that applications can use some underlying storage. Uh, and, the, and the admin manages that by saying an endpoint that tells it where to get access to the GlusterFS pods and a REST URL that points to the Hecate REST interface. Um, and after that, the user on the left there only needs to know the name of the storage class, in this case, Gluster. Um, and when you create your persistent volume claim over on the left there, it gets attached to the storage class and, when, and then uh, creates a persistent volume in some storage somewhere. In this case, it cre dynamically creates a Gluster volume um, on, your, on your Gluster storage. And that then gets attached to the PVC and can be used by an application. Uh, and that, that is now a persistent volume that can get attached to a PVC and used by a a Kubernetes application from the user. And unfortunately, at this point, there would be a demo, but the demo video itself is about four minutes long, which is about as long as its presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, he, he's Ashik. I'm Jose. Here's a couple of links. These slides will be online uh, after this presentation. And hopefully the video, too. We'll see. Thank you.